Well, I see the city is treating the citizens like like a bunch of mushrooms again. We're, <laughs> you haven't told us about about the housing problem and then that you want to make our schools into into uh, um, homeless shelters. And you, you tried to keep that on the down low. Now you try to keep this transfer station, which is going to turn into a money pit and a magnet for every criminal that's coming across the border. Don't we have enough problems in Lakewood without importing them from Denver, who is saying, yeah, Lakewood, you're stupid enough to take all of them. Take our problems, you dummies. We don't have the tax base to handle it. It's a money pit. And you guys are responsible for our money. Don't screw it up. You guys are famous for screwing things up. You build buildings without take, asking the citizens. Now you want, to, you want to build this thing. This thing is going to cost a lot of money to operate. And what if you get a bunch of kids? Then you're going to have to stick them in the schools. How is Jeffco going to pay for the, for the kids in the schools? Who's going to buy the supplies to put them in the schools? This is going to be a money pit. Didn't you even think about this? Can't you guys think five minutes ahead? What in the world are you doing up there? Do us a big favor and just quit. Get your sorry butts up and leave. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over while expecting different results. San Francisco, Los Angeles, Portland, Miami, Chicago, New York, and Denver all have explosive homeless and crime rates. I'm not saying illegal migrants, all of them are criminals, but I am saying when resources are already stretched thin, and they are scarce, people get desperate and commit crimes. Mail up and down my street is being stolen. We had a bicycle stolen out of our backyard. My son was attacked by a gang of these migrants. Funny how these invaders are all mostly men. He was beaten to a bloody pulp and left battered in the street. He was almost run over multiple times until he could drag himself to the sidewalk. Where was the government assistance for my son? And for all of the disgusting race baiters, my son is Hispanic. No one here is opposed to helping homeless. And the only side calling people names are on the opposite side of me. Denver's mayor just announced the need to pull taxpayer dollars from DMV and Parks and Rec to fund the people that are not contributing to the pot. Veterans that bled for this country are being kicked to the curb to accommodate people whose first act was to break our laws. I'm flummoxed. Surely humanity is not actually this stupid. Government needs to be reminded that the money that they spend doesn't actually grow on trees. It comes out of our pockets. The money the feds are promising is also taxpayer money. Your salaries are paid by citizens. And our pockets are not your piggy bank. When you continue to dismiss citizen concerns by gaslighting us and using Orwellian doublespeak, you insult our intelligence. You were elected to serve Lakewood citizens, not these people that cut the line based on empty promises of handouts. Now taxpayers are expected to bear the weight of them in addition to everything else we are being taxed for. This is a slap in the face of those that entered by legal means and that do contribute to the pot. I and most here are concerned that are concerned had to fight and work hard for our homes and your policies are taxing us into oblivion. There is a right and wrong way to rescue someone that is drowning so that you don't drown with them. The citizens of Lakewood are drowning and you're all talking about adding more water. If you proceed, it only proves that you lack discernment and you don't give a damn about Lakewood citizens, just the almighty dollar. When has government actually ever done anything that benefited its citizens? And when the federal funding runs out, who's left holding the bag? Being a good neighbor is watering your neighbor's plants and collecting their mail. It isn't cleaning up their messes and collecting their strays. Your requirement of being a good neighbor is waived when your neighbor adopts such disastrous policies. Sometimes people need to clean up their own mess to learn from it. Wanting to afford to keep our homes and feed our families does not make us racist. And forcing us all into poverty solves nothing. Without law and order, we won't have law and order. 
Thank you. And the thing I wanted to point out is uh, these huge amount of migrants, as you call them, illegal migrants, actually, uh, were housing these people. And it's going to cost an enormous amount of money. This federal money is not free money. Everybody's taxes are going to end up going up. And the crime is going to become incredible, just like New York City. And our infrastructure, our hospitals are going broke from all of this. And so what you're doing by housing these people here in our neighborhoods is aiding and abetting these people. And there's going to be a lot of crime that's going to come upon us because of what you're doing. And also, it costs an enormous amount of money, taxpayer money, that all of us are paying for and can't afford to pay for to house these people. So I'm against what you're doing to house them here in our neighborhoods because it'll spill over outside of Lakewood, outside of your boundaries, and it'll affect all of us. And our law enforcement will reach the point where they cannot protect us. That's what I have to say. Okay, please, you guys, I really, really, we all really, really need coordination tonight so that we can get out here at a reasonable time. I ask that we please not have any audible support or discourse. We have a lot of varying opinions in here, and I need you to please respect that. Again, we are neighbors, and this is how we need to be. We do have the, we can recess the meeting if it comes to that. Any of our counselors can actually put forward a motion to recess this meeting if they feel that this is getting too disruptive for us to be moving forward. What you see tonight is informed voters who have watched Denver's decline and don't want the same here. I'm here to remind you that we need leadership that's focused on Lakewood's problems, not Denver's. Any city resources, time or money, focused on non-citizens necessarily steals from our infrastructure, schools, security, and human services. And we are already doing our part as federal taxpayers. The city budget is our money, not yours. And we, the people, need a fiscally responsible council who delivers on the services of Lakewood's charter. Madam Mayor, you have yet to earn the trust of your citizens. And the best way to build towards that trust is focusing your efforts on citizens first. Colorado Springs has already told Denver no migrants, and you must do the same. We understand that holding you accountable does not end tonight and will require our ongoing oversight. But citizenship comes with responsibilities and freedom is worth the fight. I feel you are opening your hearts, but our wallets to this unanticipated expenditures, as I read in the ordinance, and we can read between the lines as to what that means in light of what is going on in Denver and neglecting our Lakewood citizens in order to be this dishonest term of a good neighbor is a downright display of a lack of compassion and we have gone to meetings and it's been insinuated about our compassion. My husband and I give generously to Special Olympics, Catholic Charities, the Denver Rescue Mission, our church, which provides outreach programs to the homeless, specifically a food pantry, and the Service Weather Shelter Network. We resent being told that we are not compassionate and we also resent what seems to be a sabotage of our ability to meet. We can meet whenever we want. We can Ms. discuss Pangle, what I need we you want. To finish your and we should your not time be called up. names and told that we are dealing in misinformation. So in light of this, I'm asking you to say no to the grant because the, the, un, the unanticipated expenditures are very unclear and you're failing to meet our needs as it is. Thank you. Lakewood does not have surplus funds to operate without cutting into existing city services, and you all know that, some of which desperately need additional funding. Should residents who've lived here and paid taxes here their entire lives have to worry if their car will still be in their driveway tomorrow morning when they get up to go to work? Should they worry about shoplifters who have no fear of shoplifting cartfuls of items out of stores while they pay for their groceries? 
focused on being good neighbors and fixing what ails Lakewood first. That was the end of my commentary until I saw all of you in the council chambers tonight. I wonder if it's worth even speaking because I noticed that I thought it was four, but I was corrected. Five of you are wearing butterflies tonight, clearly showing who you already support going into this meeting. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Please. All right. You guys, please. We have a long night. We're here. We want to hear you. We need to make time to do that. Disruption, slow the meeting. I did 10 and a half years in the Louisiana Army National Guard. I served my country overseas. I, I brought my troops over there and brought them all back home. And uh, one of the things I want to talk about is the Louisiana National Guard has one of the hardest leadership programs ever, uh, at least in the state of Louisiana. Uh, we had a 25 man class starting and we graduated with only six. Some of the things that we learned in that class were that you need to put your self ambitions and your self agendas aside to make, uh, basically to pull up the rest of the people underneath you or around you. And so one of the largest questions that I have surrounding this, this, uh, this item is what is this doing to serve the people of Lakewood? What is this, this item you know, in all of its, its, its grandiose and what everybody thinks is a great thing, what is this doing to serve the people of, of the city of Lakewood? How is this going to affect the people of the city of Lakewood? That's what everyone here wants answered. And it doesn't seem to me like we're getting a lot of answers. And I understand that a lot of you have the butterflies on your lapels, and I get that. I saw the flyer. I was at the town hall meeting last week, and the news, of course, called it a racist meeting. I was there. There wasn't a single racist word said there. There was an immigrant who came over here legally and spoke his matters, uh, spoke his, his opinions on the matters. And he, quote unquote, said it was a slap in the face for people coming over here legally when he had to go through the whole process of becoming legal and is now a legal citizen in America. These are the issues and concerns that the people of the city of Lake would have. And I want you guys to really hear them and hear us because it's not something that a bunch of right-wing crazy people are saying, screaming racist, hey, this is that. There are people who can barely afford to live here in the city of Lake, where the cost of steak is at almost $16 a pound. It is expensive in the, in the grocery stores and expensive to buy a house and taxes are going up on properties. You need to take that in consideration whenever you're passing these laws providing more funding for people who aren't, you know, I understand that it's open to all homeless, but let's be real about the situation. There is an influx of illegal immigrants, migrants, and this building will be used to house them as well. We need to take note of that. People here understand that. That's the way they feel. You've got to listen to the people that you serve. They're here saying their concerns, and I really don't want it to fall on deaf ears. I trust you guys to do the right thing. Thank you. I am not anti-homeless, I am not anti-migrant, I am not any of that. What I have concerns about is opening doors and bringing a wealth of amount of people that we do not have the infrastructure to take care of currently, let alone having thousands and thousands of potentially people coming in. We don't have the EMS to support it. We don't have the police force to support it. We don't have the police force enforcing current ICE protocols. We don't have the medical infrastructure in this community to support it. We have little urgent clinics all over this, this area. They're understaffed, they're undersupplied, and they're overworked. When I worked at St. Anthony Hospital, we were constantly at overcapacity. I took my mother-in-law there the week of New Year's. She was in complete respiratory distress and was sent home because she had home oxygen, because they had no room to put her in, because I was a nurse and I could monitor her at home. If we don't have the infrastructure to currently take care of our residents, how in the world are we gonna have the infrastructure to take on more? I'm coming from a medical capacity, obviously but I'm also coming from a concerned parent and a concerned citizen of this community. My husband and I have participated and volunteered in numerous activities within our community. We've participated as coaches, volunteers, 
donated shelters. I currently am on a committee at the hospital that I work at to help gather donations for our current homeless population. And we're serving meals. This $9.3 million and then some should go to our current community, not more when we don't have the built-in infrastructure to take care of our own at this time. We are constantly at overcapacity and we're constantly understaffed and we're constantly undersupplied at numerous medical facilities in this area. And if the health of our current community isn't at stake and isn't worth supporting and taking this money and putting it in our own community instead of opening other people to come into it, then I, vote, I, I recommend that you strike it down because we need to take care of our own people first. Thank you. I think that we are misguided in trying to help Denver with their migrant pro problem by making the same decisions that they are making. They are inviting people into Denver and we are going to be inviting people into Lakewood and we are going to end up with exactly the same problems that they are begging for help. Um, we are looking to uh, participate in a problem that is out of control. Uh, we won't have the funds as has already been mentioned. The grant will cover some initial costs and it will run out and then we will be putting liquid resources towards strangers rather than the people of our, our community. We need to focus on ourselves, fix our own problems before we start fixing other people's problems. And I do want to say that, that my family makes a specific point of avoiding Denver these days. It is not safe. At the times that I have been down there, every time I watch somebody commit a crime cause some sort of destruction, cause some sort of problem that is going to be somebody else's problem to fix. And I don't want to see that happening in Lakewood. And if that comes to Lakewood, to keep my family safe, we may not stay in Lakewood. We have to take care of ourselves. And if you aren't going to do it, I'm gonna to have to do it myself. That's all I have to say. For the last eight years, I have watched the city go from feeling safe and being proud of it to feeling completely unsafe and trying to figure out if we can continue to run our business here. I always felt safe shopping in Lakewood. I now have to go out of my way to go to another city to purchase groceries at our at our, as our local grocery store has become a place that I wouldn't step foot in, not without protection. That's blocks, literally blocks away from this navigation center. <sighs> what on earth have you done with the hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue that you've collected from our business? Not to mention property tax money. I drive down Colfax on a daily basis. What was once a thriving corridor has now become a place of homelessness and vacant buildings. There were plans to clean up Colfax. What happened to that? Small businesses are suffering. We are suffering. If you want to be a good neighbor, then why don't you start by taking care of your citizens? You are taking our money and you're not giving back. If you choose to go along with the good neighbor agenda with Denver, you will give our business no choice but to move to a city where we and our customers will feel safe. We won't be the first, nor the last business to leave Lakewood. You have the same problem that every sanctuary city has had, businesses leaving to move to safer locations. The amount of revenue you will lose will be astronomical. You may want to really think about this before making a decision that will make the city and its citizens suffer. Thank you.